As you hear the Christmas carols being played on the organ, take a moment, greet each other, welcome to our wish each other a Merry Christmas. That means you can stand up and move around and wake up. As we begin this Christmas service, we are going to follow from the back to the church, the cross going in as we celebrate and we'll be singing, O Come All Ye Faithful, as printed for you in your service folder. We welcome you on this Christmas morning and may God truly bless this time together in his house as we celebrate today as a family. We begin this celebration of this service on this Christmas morning in the name of the true God, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Light and the joy of Christ be with you all. this time I just invite you to kneel or sit forward in your pew as we take some time to reflect upon our sin and need of God's grace and mercy. Gracious Heavenly Father, I earnestly desire your presence on this, the celebration of Jesus' birth. Yet my sins prevent me from entering your presence and approaching your throne of grace. I acknowledge before you my sinful nature, as well as the actual sins I have committed in thought, word, and deed, by my actions and by my failure to act. For the sake of Jesus Christ, who gave his body and shed his blood for me, forgive me, dear Father, and strengthen me by your word and spirit, that your will may be accomplished in my daily life. Amen. God has sent his only begotten son to die for you, 
And for his sake, he forgives you all of your sins. Therefore, as we celebrate our Savior's birth, I announce the grace of God to all of you. In the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We stand and we sing in joyfulness of God loves me dearly continued. To us a child is born. To us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Father, Oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. The Lord has made known his salvation, he has revealed his righteousness. In the sight of the nations, he has remembered Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Almighty God, grant that the birth of your only begotten Son in the flesh may set us free from the bondage of sin through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. May you say at this time as we have the readings that are shared, please note the bold portion in the Old Testament you'll be joining with and then in the Gospel as well. The Old Testament is from Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6 through 7. We read together. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace there will be no end. On the throne of David and over his kingdom, to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle is from Galatians chapter 4, verses 3 through 5. In the same way, we also, when we were children, were enslaved to the elementary principles of the world. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as sons. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand.
Holy Gospel is from Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 through 25. Glory to you, O Lord. Now the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. And her husband Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. But as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took his wife, but knew her not until she had given birth to a son, and he called his name Jesus. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We profess our faith through the words of the second article in, in the understanding of redemption being bought back through Jesus Christ and that righteousness that he has given to us. And so we join together. And in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. What does this mean? I believe that Jesus Christ, true God, begotten of the Father from eternity, and also true man, born of the Virgin Mary, is my Lord, who has redeemed me, a lost and condemned person, purchased and won me from all sins, from death and from the power of the devil, not with gold or silver, but with his holy, precious blood and with his innocent suffering and death, that I may be his own and live under him in his kingdom and serve him in everlasting righteousness, innocence, and blessedness, just as he is risen from the dead, lives and reigns to all eternity. This is most certainly true. May we see it as we sing that hymn, Go Tell It on the Mountain.
This is the morning that the Lord has made, so let us rejoice I hope you had your cup of coffee this morning. I hope you're ready to rejoice and celebrate on this Christmas morning. Indeed, the gift of what it is to be in God's house as a faith family in Christ Jesus. And to just be here to spend time with the gifts that he has for you and for me. The base of our time together is the gospel reading from the Gospel of John. We have went through the midweek Advent through the Gospel of John. I thought it would be fitting to continue with that for today as we hear from the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 14 through 17. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. John bore witness about him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks before me, because he was before me. And from his fullness we have all received grace upon grace, for the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Grace, mercy, peace be unto all of you from God, our Father, living Lord, our one, our true, and our only Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's pray this morning. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank, we praise you for this gift and this blessing to come into your house on this grand and this glorious morning, celebrating the birthday of our Lord and our Savior, the birthday where we know that you have given your only Son to be born of the Virgin, true man and true God, to be the world's Savior. Bless our time together and fill us with the joy of the gifts that you have for us. In Jesus' most powerful name we pray, and all God's people say, Amen. Amen. That doesn't mean the sermon's over. (laughs) As I said, we started with the understanding that through midweek Advent, we looked at the Gospel of John during the Uh, weekend services we went through the gospel of Luke and last night we focused on Luke and so fittingly we tie all of the midweek and in fact all about Christmas in these words that John was sharing but specifically I want you to think about those words from the gospel of John 1 14 we have seen his glory in my life I have heard some life-changing words. Yes, I will marry you. Honey, I'm pregnant. Your first church that you're called to is Spirit Lake, Iowa. You're on a call list, and then they tell you they called you to their church. Dad, I'm joining the Marines. Dad, I've been accepted at Concordia, Wisconsin. Dad, I've been accepted at Concordia, but also to Samford University in Alabama, which Alabama is much warmer than here, so I think that might be where we'd be visiting. Life-changing words. These are only a few, of course, of the ones that have impacted me, that have been life-changing for me. And I'm sure that you have had life-changing words that maybe come across your mind, life-altering words and life financial words that have changed your dynamics as well. Well, today our gospel, the gospel of John chapter 1, 14, shares life-changing, life-altering, <laughs> tremendous life word changes to our heart and our life. For we hear these words, not just for John sharing, but these are words that John is sharing that every true believer should hold on to. That Jesus, the world Savior, well, we have seen his glory. You can see John doesn't say, I glanced, I glimpsed, I previewed, I peeked. John doesn't say, I stand in the back of the room and listen to someone describing who Jesus is. John pulls his bifocals out, his binoculars out. John gets the telescope and the microscope. John focuses with his eyes fixed on Jesus, and John sees Jesus. And see, that's what John would want any of the readers of the scriptures to have. But specifically, that's what the Holy Spirit wants to take with these words into your heart, into your life, especially at this Christmas time, to see Jesus. 
to see Jesus not only as that cute little baby in the manger, but as shared by John in the gospel in John 1, 29, see the Lamb of God who takes away the... In John 1, 46, Philip invites Nathaniel to Jesus with these words, come and... The Samaritan woman says in John 4, 29, come see a man who told me everything I ever did. On Palm Sunday, John 12, 15 says, See, your comes to you. Your what on Palm Sunday? Your Savior, your King. On Easter morning, in John 20, 18, Mary is beside herself, and he shares those words. I have seen the Lord. But the blind man in John 9, 24 says it best. And he said these words. I was blind, but now I blind but now I see. Today we see Jesus for who he is. Jesus the prophet from Galilee who spoke with authority like none other. The Jesus who loved with such childlike humility. The Jesus who is present even at the time of creation and before. The Jesus who is the Alpha and the Omega. The Jesus who is the Prince of Peace, King of Kings, Lord of Lords. And the Jesus who is our Emmanuel. Today, this Christmas, we echo John. We have seen his. We have seen his. We have seen his. All right, now you guys are awake. But what's that mean? I mean, his glory. Just what is his glory? It might not be what you think. Because when we hear those words glory, most oftentimes we think of beauty, power, majesty, and might. We think of Jesus maybe walking on water, Jesus feeding the 5,000, Jesus raising Lazarus, Jesus healing the sick, cleansing the lepers, making the cripple whole again. Christ's glory must mean that he's always walking about an inch above ground. Christ's glory must mean that he's always emitting a glow, a heavenly light. Is that it? Is that really the glory? Well, John's gospel, Christ's supreme and ultimate glory, is recorded in his suffering and death. On Palm Sunday, with his face set like flint toward the cross, Jesus says in John 12, 23, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. In the upper room, right after Judas Iscariot leaves to betray him for 30 pieces of silver, Jesus says in John 13, 31, Now is the Son of Man glorified. And just before his arrest in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus says in John 17, 1, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son. Get it? We have seen his glory, Christ's glory. In John's gospel is his bitter suffering death. And so that he, Jesus, would carry out the greatest gift and be the greatest gift for the entire world through that glory. That includes the understanding of those words of John 3, 16. For God so, that he, that whosoever shall perish. Christmas. Jesus, the world's Savior, our Savior, is a blessing of the child of God where we see that child in the cradle, the birth of Jesus, but know in faith the love and the depth of that love of God because we know that the cradle of Jesus pointed to the cross that Jesus took for us. Jesus' name means the one who You'll call him Jesus because he's the one who saves. His name will mean the one who saves. We celebrate this Christmas because we know what it points to. The gift as God's children to be able to join with John and be able to, with that faith and that trust, be able to say, like John said, we have seen his What did you get for Christmas? 
you know what? Maybe you got a gift that you liked, and maybe you got a gift of looking like, why did I get that? <laughs> what were you thinking, Dad? Yeah, I got a couple of those. But anyways, that's okay. So what if you got a gift that doesn't uh, work or doesn't uh, meet the standards or doesn't there? That's nah, just kind of fun getting sometimes of those gifts, right? But today, you get to say with your family that what I got for Christmas is a faith to be able to say that I see his glory and Jesus, the world savior, has brought his glory to my life. So when somebody asks you what you get for Christmas, the faith to be able to say, I have seen his glory. Think about that gift. Think about what that means. Think about how long that one will last and it will be the gift that keeps on giving, not Hallmark. It will be the gift that outlasts the Energizer Bunny. Because it's his glory. And we have seen it. Maybe look with our bifocals, our binoculars, our telescope, our microscope. And fix our eyes on this Jesus. The Son of God. Amen. Peace of God that's past our understanding. Keep our hearts and mind in Christ Jesus, both now and forevermore. Amen. Let's stand as we continue with the prayers. <coughs> Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus. For all people according to their needs, bless the faithful proclamation of Christ's saving name. That the good news of the incarnation of our Lord will be heard throughout the world in every land and tongue. Guard and defend the holy Christian church. And all who share in the joy of this day, Lord, in your mercy, bless this your church and its people with a full measure of joy, that we may echo the songs of the angel in our churches, homes, and communities, Lord, in your mercy, watch over, bless, protect all who serve, and protect us as we worship. Be with our armed forces, police forces, firefighters, medical professionals, and others. Grant them joy in their work and give them your peace, Lord, in your mercy. As we celebrate joy in the gift of your Son, O oh Lord, remember before you all those whose hearts are burdened and whose joy is not fulfilled. Comfort the lonely with your presence. By your gracious power, in keeping with your will, grant healing to the sick. We pray that those whose hearts are burdened with memories of loved ones who are no longer present, to celebrate with us this year, that they may find peace and hope in the message of your love, Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We say at this time as the offerings for the Lord's ministry will be um, received at this time. Please note that the welcome folders are in the pew, and probably with the Christmas Eve services, they are still in there. So if you draw a line after the Christmas Eve and, and write... 1225 and then names after that that'd be greatly appreciated and thank you for all of you for being here Please stand as the offerings are now brought forward.
Gracious Father in heaven, on this Christmas day, we come, we celebrate the gift of indeed, we have seen the glory of your son, Jesus Christ, and what that means for us, both now and eternally, through the Savior. We respond with our gifts, and we give back to you, O Lord, and ask that you would bless all that is here being returned for this, your ministry, to keep proclaiming and sharing the message of Christ, the message of salvation, the message of your glory. In your name we pray and ask your blessing. Amen. Continue on page six as we prepare now to have the gift of the Lord's Supper, the true body and blood of Christ, and with this bread and wine to give to us the gifts that keeps on giving forgiveness, life, and salvation through Christ. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, Salutor, we should all times and in all places give thanks to you. O Lord, our God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Grant us your spirit, grace, Father, that we may give heed to the testament of your Son in true faith and, above all, firmly take to heart the words with which Christ gives to us his body and blood for our forgiveness. By your grace, lead us to remember and give thanks for the boundless love which he manifests to us when, by pouring out his precious blood, he saved us from a righteous wrath and from sin, death, and hell. Grant that we may receive the bread and wine that is his body and blood as a gift, guarantee, and pledge of his salvation. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. <coughs> our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is a new testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of our Lord will be with you always. Amen. We speak together. O Christ, thou Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. O Christ, thou Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Christ, thou Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, grant us thy peace. Amen. May we say it at this time as we prepare for the Lord's Supper.
What do we get there for Christmas? The faith to see his glory, the faith to be blessed with this Lord's Supper, the gift of all the gifts that God has for us now and eternally. And we stand and respond like the angels. Hark the angels sing. We praise you, Lord God, for the gifts of forgiveness, life, and salvation that we have received through the very body and blood of your gift of love through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Strengthen our faith that we may celebrate with joy and peace and proclaim the good news of salvation in his name through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and rules with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. As we go this day, we go with a blessing, the blessing that our Savior brings to us now and eternally. And so as you go in this Christmas joy, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and to be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. We continue with the two verses that are printed for us of joy to the world. On the final verse, we're going to be following the cross out and feel free just to process right, you know, recess right behind me from the front and we'll all just kind of continue on into our Christmas joy that the Lord has given to us. Mm -hmm. 